Hello. Hi, my name's Troy. Nice to meet you. Hi, Troy. I'm Jane. Jane. Very nice to meet you. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, just quickly, we can be walking up a few steps and stuff. Do you have any injuries, any steps you need to be aware of? Legally, me, but that's fine. Do you have any issues? Just let me know as we go. Okay. Hello. 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 I'm the Skull. Skull. Lovely to meet you, Skull. Um, welcome. Welcome. Do you want to be Walking up steps and stuff today. Do you have any conditions? I'm a little bit unfit today. A little bit unfit? It's okay. It's okay. It's nice and flat. Just a couple of steps, I will be fine. Thank you. Hello, my Hi. name's Troy. Gary, I'm the other boy. Gary? Oh, okay. Lovely. Lovely. Nice yes. to meet you. And you? It's nice to meet you. So, um, do you have any injuries or anything? Uh, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? Excellent. Hopefully the rain holds oh. off. Hello. My name's Troy. Hi Troy. Colin. Nice, nice to meet you Colin. Nice to meet you. Uh, welcome. Um, any injuries I need to worry about or anything like Just that? Just sore calves. Sore calves? Okay. <laughs> Not too much walking. <laughs> Not too much walking. I'll see what I can do for us. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Welcome. Firstly, I'd like to welcome you all to Sydney. Um, and if this is your first time to Sydney, welcome. It's a beautiful city. Unfortunately, the weather's not behaving today, but we'll push on and go, go with it. Uh, just while I'm talking about the weather, the ground will be very wet and slippery, so just be careful underfoot. Um, I just don't want people slipping over, and your safety is my, my number one interest, as well as you having fun. If you are coming back to Sydney, visiting again, welcome back, it is a beautiful city. Or if you are a resident in Sydney, welcome. Enjoy. I hope I can teach you something, but it will be an enjoyable time. Um, we will start off from here very shortly. We will head down to the Harbour Bridge, which is the main attraction of our tour. But while we're here, um, I'll give you some interesting facts or information about where we're standing. So, we're currently standing at Circular Quay, which is a transport hub of Sydney. So, the hub is, we've got ferries here to, to the left. Um, the ferries will take you all around the city on Sydney Harbour. So they'll take you across to Manly, Balmain, across to North Sydney. You can get tickets for the ferries at the top of the terminals um, where, where they are and they also have all the timetables there. Also at the front of the terminals you have buses as well. So these buses will also take you to the eastern suburbs and other surrounds of Sydney. The timetables are there as well. Buses usually um, you need to pay careful attention because sometimes they're prepaid buses so you can get a ticket for the prepaid buses from a news agent or um, a shop like that or one of the travel stands in the station just here. And we also have the train station here which is located on the City Circle Loop. Which will, so the City Circle Loop will take you up to Central Station, Town Hall, Wynyard, St James and Museum stations and um, you can catch that. Trains are very regular there um, and you can buy a ticket from downstairs at the uh, ticket machines or there is a window attendant there as well and like I said, the trains are pretty regular. Also, that train will take you to the airport as well if you need to get to the airport. So, transport hub. Behind me, sorry, to the right, to the right, this is the MCA. This is the Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, it's a lovely museum if you're interested in contemporary art. It is free to enter and they also do free guided tours during the day. So if you are interested in visiting, please check it out. It is really nice, but if, only if you're interested in contemporary uh, art. Yeah, yep, yep. Inter definitely interested. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, I can give you more details as we go on if you would like yeah, more details. Go. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Over here as well, so from Circular Quay you can make your way around to the Opera House which is one of the main attractions of Sydney, as you know. Um, so at the moment there is an event going on so you can't cut across in front of the in front of the steps but you can still walk around the Opera House and soak in a few of the city. And if you go past the Opera House you also have the Sydney Botanical Gardens as well which are very nice to walk around and it can take you around to Mrs Macquarie's chair. Uh, which gives you a beautiful view back of the uh, Opera House yeah, and Harbour Bridge. So, yeah, so, so yeah. that is a really nice view, um, nighttime and daytime, to check out. So we're just about going to make a move um, onwards. Uh, firstly, I just point out a couple of things that 
if you decide you no longer want to be part of the tour, that's fine. Just let me know so I can, um, so I know not to look for you. Also, if you happen to see a shop what you like or an ice cream store that you might like to stop at while we're on our tour, and all of a sudden you look outside and we're all gone, that's fine. Don't leave. Just stay there. I would have noticed that you were gone before you even realised you were gone and I'll come back and look for you. So don't wander off, come try look for me, I'll come look for you. Um, and also for those not from Australia or the UK, uh, we do drive on the wrong side of the road here in Australia. So it is very important to make sure that when we do cross the road, we will be crossing together, but uh, we do drive on the, on the left hand side of the road so it's just something to keep in mind whilst, whilst we're going around. And one last thing is um, if I have crossed the road and you haven't made it for some reason, don't run across the road, try to catch up. I will wait on the other side of the road um, until it is safe for you to catch up, but we will be crossing our traffic lights and crossings Perfect. today. All right, yeah. so lovely all to meet you. Welcome again, um, and we'll get moving along and uh, make our way down to the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we've made our way a little bit down from Circular Quay and we're now standing at one of the entranceways of the Rocks. The Rocks is the oldest, one of the oldest suburbs in Sydney and it's got great architecture and old buildings, colonial style buildings from when Sydney was founded. Now, you can see behind me there's markets here. On, on this market lane, these markets are set up every Friday night and Saturdays. So if you're in the area and want to check out some local markets, you can get Aboriginal art um, and other local crafts um, from there. So it is really good to see. And also, up this lane is the one of Sydney's main visitor centres. So if you're looking for ideas to do in Sydney, uh, you can visit the information centre, which is just up the lane to the right. Um, and they'll give you a lot of ideas. I'll even organise and book tours for you as well. Uh, for those here cruising, the International Pas Passenger Terminal is just here to my right. Um, so you'll see a lot of cruise ships come in there. Um, so yeah, um, the sorry, the cruise terminal is one of the major hubs for in Sydney. It's one of the major hubs for the Asian Pacific region. Uh, so you can get a lot of um, cruises there to anywhere within the Asian Pacific. Okay, so we're just going to cross this road here. Uh, just remember what I said before, crossing the road, don't try to catch up if you miss out. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll catch up. continue along. Okay, if you're not here, please let me know if you're not here. One, two, three, four, we've got everyone. Okay, let's move on. Thank you.
Hey Chai, do you know when the, when the bridge was built? The bridge started construction in 1924, uh, which was six years after the end of the war to end all wars. Uh, Let's get under that bridge. But, uh, we'll just move into the shelter here. And, and it's then, still raining. Then I'll happily answer all questions. Thank you. come to Sydney, they want to see two things, Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. Now, it is an unwritten rule in Australia that you can only be an Australian if you have a nickname. So does anyone have an idea of possibly what the nickname of this old girl is? Bridget. Bridget. Skull. No, I don't know. No, no. It's the coat hanger. Ah. So we can't see from under here because we're sheltered from the, the rain, but it is the arch, the coat hanger. So it's officially a strain. It's got an interesting background, sorry, I'm just waiting for the train to pass. Before I get talking about the bridge first though, I better check, does anyone have any questions? When, when was the bridge built? The bridge was built in 1924. Oh, no. It started construction. Why, why was it built? Why was it built? Very good question. So, I will tell you, but hold on to that thought. So, Australia is a relatively new country. It was colonised for the first time in 1788. If you compare that to England or anywhere else around the world, we're very young, we're very new. It took 30 years until they actually decided, after colonising in, in Sydney, they decided we need to build a bridge from here to there. To the North Shore. Yeah. To, the, to the North Shore at that time, so to get across to the other side. This is in 1815 they decided to do this. In 1900, it was the first time the government said, can we have expressions of interest to develop a plan to build the bridge. So it took them 85 years to act on Sounds this. like the New South Wales government. Well, <laughs> it, it does very much sound like the New South Wales government, as people would say. Um, so it took them the 85 years to finally decide. Plans were submitted, no plans were successful. None. So they sat on their hands again. Before they knew it, World War I came, it went, and in 1920 they asked for some missions again to build the Harbour Bridge for designs. And Dr Bradfield submitted a design and he was successful. This was his design. Now this is in 1920. Then they issued a expressions of interest for someone to come and build it and it was actually given to an English company from Middlesbrough, Gorman and Long and Company to come and build this bridge which started in 1924. Construction of the bridge was done in various stages. The first stage was to, you've got to think from this side here was all old buildings because it was old colonial of Sydney. This side was a couple buildings and and bushland still, so it, it wasn't very developed because it was far away. And to answer your initial, your initial question, the reason they decided to build the bridge is that to get from this side to that side in 1925 road, it was a 20 kilometer journey by horse, car, walking, swimming. You could swim it, or there were boats and ferries that took you across to the other side. So 20 kilometres back in 1920 
is a distance. And to do that journey, you also had to cross five separate other bridges to cross all the harbour inland along the way to get across to the other side. So on this side of Sydney, they actually had to destroy homes and 800 families had to be reallocated to make way for the bridge to, to start construction because the way they constructed the bridge, they started off by building the, the ramps up to the bridge. Then what they did, they started work on the beginning of the pylons and then the arch all the way across. This took several years. So it started in 1924. It wasn't until 1930 when the two arches actually met because they built it in cemetery. So what this side was doing, this side was doing. And 19, it was 19th of August, 1930 when those two points So they met. built from both ends? Built from both ends. So they built it from both ends. What they were doing on one side, they did on the other until it met in the middle. And then what they did, they come down and built the road level. Was it financed by the government or was it financed by private enterprise? So it was financed by the people. So the tolls, it took, it was estimated that it cost 10 million pounds to build. And the New South Wales people finally paid off it by tolls, finally paid it off in 1988. Wow. Wow. So it took a long time, but in true New South Wales government form, on the tolls are still there. Well, at least one way. <laughs> Interesting thing. No, I will come back about the tolls. I will come back. So, to finish the, the story of the construction of the bridge, then they built the road level. In February 1932, it was complete. The bridge was complete. So they thought, we need to load test this. So they brought 96 steamrollers onto the bridge to test the load. And they think at any one time it can hold over 20,000 tonnes of weight. Now the pillars. The pillars are quite interesting on the bridge. What do you think the purpose of the pillars are? Hold the bridge up. Hold the bridge up. Don't know. Not sure. They're actually just there to look for. Oh, they've not got any. any they've got no supporting nature whatsoever. The supports are actually in the bottom here, where the, you can see the bridge pump down in. There's a 12 metre hole dug to join bearings into the ground to support the whole weight of the bridge. So they're just there for show. Um, and it wasn't in the original plan, it was only later it was actually added in to give it a bit of aesthetic. Now these, the pillars were actually quite, quite interesting because they were, the, all the stone was mason quarried from a small New South Wales town called Maria on the south coast. So every single bit was quarried there, they cut it into shape and size, they numbered it, put it on a boat and brought it up to Sydney and then they put it together here like a big Lego set. And then that's how they put the pillars together here. The pillars stand 89 metres above sea level. And the pillar on this end, you can actually village, uh, village, visit during the day. It's the museum of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. You can enter, you can enter the steps up here, which I'll show on our way back up where these steps are. Um, and you can visit there. It's $13.50 to visit, and it's open between 9 a.m. and 10, 10, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every single day. Last entries are at 4.30. So the still for the bridge construction, 80% of it's from the UK. Yes. <laughs> So, the English do have part of the bridge, and most of the workers are from the UK, Scotland, England, and also Australians. You also have to remember at the time it is after the Great, the Great yeah, there War, was, there was so there was a devastation of, of um, loss of men to do the construction work. So back to the opening. Picture this. 
It's 1932. It's 19th of March. Everyone's there, all lined up for the bridge opening. They're all there. The Honourable Premier's there. He's ready to cut the ribbon. This big long ribbon out across the bridge. The bridge is 49 metres wide. They had a ribbon from one end to the other end. He's there with his golden scissors. He's there ready to cut the ribbon to open the bridge. Then all of a sudden there's a commotion in the background. Up comes Captain Francis de Groot on his horse, riding along on his horse, straight up in front of everyone and slashes the ribbon open to announce the bridge open. He stole his thunder. He stole the Premier's thunder. He had the belief that a, a, a bridge such beautiful and significant as this, the only people with the right to open it is from the royal family, not the Premier. So what did they do? It's been open, it's been opened by the wrong person. So quick, get the sticky tape, sticky tape the ribbon back together. No, we don't have sticky tape, so what do we do? They got there, they tied the, the ribbon back together, and then he walked up with his scissors and went snip. The bridge was open, <laughs> 19th of March, 1932. And Captain Francis de Groot, he was fined five pounds. <laughs> For his teeth. <laughs> so the bridge was opening in, um, in weird circumstances back then. At that time though, when it was, once again, cast your mind back, it's 1932, to take a head of sheep or pigs across the bridge, you had to pay one penny per head. To take cattle or horses as a group across the bridge, it was three pence. If you are lucky enough to have a motor vehicle, it was six pence. If you are a rider on your horse, three pence. And also, if you had a, a car, a heavy car or a truck, it was one shilling. These days, who knows what the toll is, because it changes. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Wow, the weather has really picked up in... Sunny Sydney. Sunny Sydney. <laughs> the uh, people from the UK will be definitely feeling, I'm uh, feeling from home at the moment. I'm moving, getting wet. We're, we're okay. <laughs> Sorry, keep <laughs> coming. Keep All right, we're in the middle of the bridge now. We're safe, we're good. I'll just wait for the cyclists to go past. Do we have any questions at the moment? Why is it raining under the bridge? <laughs> Why is it raining at the bridge? Because we don't have sides <laughs> on the bridge. <laughs> Why not? He, he, Dr. Bradfield was a visionary of his time, but he underestimated the Sydney weather. Yeah, El Nino. <laughs> So yes, as I was saying, the toll today, it is intermittent, no matter how often, the time of day you actually travel on the bridge, actually change the prices to stop people doing it during peak times. Right. Back in 1932, they estimated that there was about 11,000 11, items of traffic went over the bridge a day. So whether it was sheep, cows, cars, not many cows, but that, that's what happened. Today, there's almost 200,000 cars that go over this bridge. So much that they've built a tunnel to cater for traffic. So much the congestion is more that they're now building another tunnel under Port Jackson. Now it's working about the construction. It is a hub of Sydney. As you can hear, there are trains that go over all the time. If you want to experience a bridge, well, not under it, like we are today, there's many different options. You can walk over the bridge, you can ride over the bridge, you can go up the pylon, as I mentioned before, you can even climb the bridge. So there is Sydney Bridge Climb, they cost about $200 per person, but if you're interested in that, it is a fantastic way to get a view of the harbour and see the bridge and stand on it and get get the, the feeling of what it's like to stand 134 metres above sea level and you've got to think you can see on the bridge that there's a lot of rivets in the bridge 
They estimate that there is 6 million rivets in this bridge all done by hand during the construction of the bridge. So when you're actually up there, there's no floor below you. So you're up there, harnessed in, doing this, you put the rod in, you put the cap over it and then you, then you rivet it in by hand 6 million times so it was actually quite dangerous. But over this span, there was only 16 people who died building the bridge, which some people say is very successful. In today's terms, that would be unacceptable. But once again, it was 1932. Also, once a year, they do close the bridge down for a fun run. So if you are around in September and want to run across the bridge with a lot of other people, you can do that in September. <laughs> Yep, Dr. Bradfield definitely should have built <laughs> this eye pose. It's, it's, raining, it's raining through the bridge as well. Look. Are you through the bridge? Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, it is the centrepiece for a lot of Sydney celebrations. Do you see fireworks? The Harbour Bridge is the main attraction. The finale, yeah. Definitely the main attraction. Also, when we had the Olympics, they put the five rings on the bridge as a symbol of this is Australia. People recognise it, they know what it is. You can also get really good views of the bridge from, from the harbour as well. So, catch a ferry, catch a ferry out, and you can get awesome views of the bridge. Any questions? No, very well explained. Very well explained, no yeah. questions? No, that's fantastic, thank you very much. Where's the nearest pub? Nearest pub. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well firstly I must thank you all for coming today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I apologise for the weather. This is not traditional Sydney weather. Well, maybe in summer it is. <laughs> uh, beautiful morning, unfortunately with the humidity it's come out. But I'd like to thank you all for coming along. Um, I hope you've had a great time and enjoyed it. I'll also be emailing you all a survey to complete, uh, to complete to let me know how you felt about the survey. All comments are appreciated. If it's bad, I'll just delete it and ignore it. Absolutely. <laughs> but all comments are appreciated and we will take everything on board. Your feedback is very important to us because I'm here to help you and ensure that you enjoy your time. If you don't have any more questions, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it and thank you. Great. Right. Thanks for nice. Thank you. Well Fantastic. Done. Well Fantastic. done.